Hey, hi everyone. I'm geologically inspired here by being in the Laurie Canyons uh, in Virginia. A really incredible formation here. And the point I wanted to make is a follow-up to the previous video where we're talking about some of the basics about how to look at global oil. And in the case here, what we're thinking about is U.S. geology and how come the U.S. is the world's biggest oil and gas producer by far, even though, as you can see from this slide, uh, we don't have the largest oil and, or gas reserves by any means. And the, 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 that's one of the key questions that you think might be related to uh, U.S. engineering or something else. But in reality, it's about U.S. property rights. And the key difference with the U.S. against all these other countries the way you see the oil reserves being so huge, with the notable example obviously being both Saudi Arabia and above all Venezuela, is government ownership, government ownership of land and government ownership of the minerals. The U.S. oil industry is private mostly. They do exploit federal lands, but broadly speaking, it's a private industry on private lands and one that uh, ultimately also has private mineral rights. So the, the mineral rights under the land are also separately tradable. And if you own the land, therefore, you're due to the mineral rights underneath if you still own them. So what that means basically is that anyone who exploits U.S. oil and gas is, uh, rec um, is recompensed, is paid for the fact that you're taking environmental risk, you're taking land risk in, in uh, de developing oil and gas, uh, whereas in fact, of course, in most countries, the government takes the risk and the profit. And so if you take an example of something like the Paris Basin in France, which is right underneath Paris, which has enormous potential, huge unconventional fracking potential, the problem there isn't that necessarily everyone's an environmentalist, it's that the local farmers don't own the mineral rights, the government does, and therefore you don't exploit, because if the farmer allows drilling on his land, essentially he takes all the environmental risk but gets none of the reward, none of the profits from the actual royalties which would go to the French government. By contrast, obviously, in Texas, the landowner takes the profits and the risk, and that means that the industry operates at a completely different level, basically, from the rest of the world, with pretty much the exception of Canada. So really, the difference between exploitation and development of oil and gas is about governments. What this means is the whole question about are we running out of oil is, is partly nonsensical, basically, because it's a problem of governments, not of oil in the ground. The other issue you have to remember is that, depending on your oil price assumption, you have a very different amount of oil available. So it's very difficult to say exactly how much oil or gas ultimately is recoverable, because basically you can crush coal to oil at $150 a barrel if you assume it'll be $150 a barrel forever. And ultimately, that would then lead to huge potential reserves. So one of the balancing items here is what oil price do we assume in the future for how much oil is developable? And obviously this is a major issue right now because of the potential for uh, regime change in Venezuela. Because of course if you get rid of the incompetent and really quite evil Venezuelan government, in fact if you've seen uh, Maduro has a $50 million bounty on his head from the FBI for drug smuggling, if we could make that change in Venezuela you could open up a tremendous amount of oil to private, uh, private exploitation which ultimately would benefit also the people of Venezuela, wouldn't necessarily benefit oil prices. So that's one of the key ways to look at global oil and how the production levels uh, interact with the price versus whether or not the government is in control. The vast majority of, of oil and gas globally is under government control and therefore is much less exploited, uh, much less efficiently than you see in the US. That's your TED talk, thanks.